Ryan Smith here for another edition of the UMO Coaches Show. Joined today with men and women's head golf coach Chip Spire. And uh, coach, women played this past weekend, two different days. Um, saw a lot of good play out of you know both teams, or sorry, out of both days. Um, saw a lot of flowing from, you know, girls didn't start probably where they wanted to shoot, but then climbed a lot of spots there in the second round. What did you see out of them this weekend that you can take home with? Well, yeah, they um, at each for each of them, it, it seemed like there was points in the in the rounds where things weren't going the way they would like, whether it was the beginning, middle, end, what have you. Um, but what I saw from the girls was a fight. Um, they didn't ever give up, and because of that, um, this the scores reflected it. They they ended up shooting good scores um, both days. Was, were they as good as they would hope for? Uh, probably not. Um, you know, but but each of them, I thought, hung in there really, really well, and, and ended up shooting good scores. And you talk about you know some of the, the you know the guts that the girls showed and that that aspect. When the tournament's over and you guys are driving home, what do you say to them when they you know they are shooting ten plus strokes better in the second round? Is it just a Okay, the first round was bad. Or do you try to focus more on the, this is how well you improved and this is how you need to kind of continue the trend every time you think you're shooting bad? No, it's, it, I would say generally they themselves will say that they didn't perform as well as they could have. So I'm the one saying congratulations on playing well. Um, it's, it's funny how golfers are never satisfied. They, you know, no matter how well they play and score, they don't always hit it as well as they like to. Mm -hmm. And so they come off the golf course, they shoot a good score, but they're not satisfied, they're not happy, and I'm the one that's having to remind them, yeah, but it was still a good score. Right. You know, maybe you didn't hit it perfectly, um, which is golf, but you scored well, and that's what you have to take home from it. Which then kind of transitions a little bit that can be a difficult thing for for you as a coach, you've got both teams competing next weekend in Myrtle Beach, and they're not playing at the same course. Um, obviously, the men have kind of gone through some tribulations this past <laughs> semester, more than at least to my recollection has been with all the hurricanes and canceled tournaments. They haven't played as much as they've wanted to. So how do you keep the teams focused going into almost having two weeks off since the last time they played? Well, we're gonna, we're, what we've been trying to do is play. We've extended qualifying. Um, usually we can do that in a couple of days. This time we're doing more than um, four days. So you, you extend that and then you, you try to get them out there and play and, and um, you know, make it a competition each time you're playing to kind of keep that competitive spirit. We'll, we'll do little things, little games where you're taking clubs out of their bags or, or things like that to help with the competition part. Mm -hmm. uh, but the main thing is, is just play. Uh, they're they're kind of used to the breaks, um, and in a lot of ways it's good. So we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. So fast forwarding kind of to that tournament in Myrtle Beach, how difficult is it for you as a coach to have both of your teams playing at two different courses? Every now and again we'll see the two teams play in different states sometimes, but – to have them at the same location, but two courses, well, you can't be in two places at once. So how difficult is that for you as a coach? It's always frustrating, and, and you might as well be in different states, even though they're on two different golf courses, because you just can't get to where they are. Um, golf carts aren't that fast, I'm guessing. Well, yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> um, you know, they need bigger and faster ones. But, yeah, they, yeah it, you just you can't do it because you're, you're with one team, and while that team's playing, the other one's playing, and um, you, you just can't be there for both of them. And, and that stings for me uh, because you want to be there. You, you, you want to see them performing well, and you don't want to hear about how well they did afterwards uh, because you weren't there. Right. And, you know, if they happen to win, you know, you want to be a part of that. It's, um, you know, I can't imagine – uh, other coaches going through kind of what we go through where your team's actually performing and, and generally our teams play at a, at a higher level. 
and not get to watch it. Right. You know, so. so that, you know, trying to transitions into kind of the final question here of the teams play at two different places and you guys go through your qualifying and everything else. But at the end of the day, how do the teams – they're together as one because all, even though they all play as individuals, they play together as a team. How much of a difficult thing is it for you as a coach to watch them go through the round and obviously you're going to try to coach them as they go through, but to really just let them be and let you know their performance be their performance? It's Every individual is different. Um, so you, you're going to have more input for some than you will for others. I think that that's part of the tricky part of coaching is figuring out what you can say and what you can't say. Um, but for the most part, you know, they're on their own island doing it themselves, pulling the right clubs, pulling the wrong clubs, you know, making those decisions almost entirely by themselves. So what does the field look like for the Myrtle Beach Inter Intercollegiate? Obviously, it's a big tournament. Um, teams coming from all over the place. But what are your expectations of the field? Well, it should be a good field. Um, anytime you, you put together Conference Carolinas, um, you know, the, the, the SAC or Peach Belt schools, you're going to have a good field. I mean, just the way it is. Um, so I expect a good field. I expect us to play well. Um, the men have been playing well um, since the first tournament at the beginning of the semester. Um, the girls are continuing to, to play well. They keep getting more consistent each time they go out. So I expect good finishes out of both teams. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck going down to South Carolina. We'll catch up with you after the tournament and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. For head coach Chip Spire and I'm Ryan Smith, this has been another edition of the UMO Coaches Show. Exceptional degrees at an exceptional value. That's transforming education. The University of Mount Olive, transforming education, transforming lives. Learn more at umo.edu. That's umo.edu.